Hi guys, we'll just wait a couple seconds here to get some people on. Hi guys. So you just want to make sure that you have a clear space on the wall. Um, and if you don't, there will be variations to everything. If you do, you probably don't want to wear socks just so that you can stick onto the wall, but we will progress into everything. And we'll get started here in a couple seconds. So tonight we are going to start in a seated position against the wall. So unfortunately I don't have a flush wall with my garage floor here so it's not as comfortable for me. But if you do, you want to sit nice and close against the wall here. So your tailbone's right against the wall. Shoulders are pressing into the uh, wall here as well. The chest is open. Just find a comfortable position that you can sit tall in. Drop the chin slightly towards the chest. You drop the hands to the knees, to the lap, just whatever feels most comfortable for your body. Let's close the eyelids down and start to take some deep, full breaths in through the nose. Exhale out through the nose. Trying to engage our Ujjayi breath. So as you inhale, the chest rises, the lungs expand, and as you exhale, squeeze that right fist together, tighten through the core. Inhale, filling the chest up. Exhale, contracting through those abdominals, squeezing any leftover oxygen out through the nose. that sound of your breath. If it's feeling rushed, just slowing down, coming back to a child's pose. I'm just going to start off nice and gently. You're going to bring your left hand behind your back onto the wall here. Open up that shoulder. So rolling the shoulder into the wall, that left shoulder's pulling back. You're going to drop your right ear over to the right shoulder. Just feeling some length through the neck. And still maintaining a deep, full breath. Awesome. Let's switch sides, releasing that left arm. Right hand comes behind the back. Again, slide that shoulder into the wall, sit up nice and tall. And then dropping your left shoulder down to the left ear, feeling a nice pull through the side of the neck, down into the arm. Exhale, let's come up nice and gently. 
you can place your block to the side if you have one. We're just going to bring the knees together, roll on to your side, and we're going to turn around and face the wall here in your cat pose. So in your cat pose, you're on all fours. I want you to lengthen the legs out, and either from the knees or the toes, you're going to lower down. So that was a nice and tight, nice and tight to the sides. Try not to hit your head on the wall. And then from here, we're going to slide our fingertips into the wall. So again, I kind of have a lip here at the end of my wall, so I'm not going to be flush with this part. But you're going to press your fingertips into the wall, and here I want you to just lift up slightly. So instead of coming all the way up here, we're just pressing those forearms into the mat, sliding the shoulders away from the ears, and trying to press the chest up towards the wall. If it feels all right for the eyes, looking between the eyes up towards the ceiling. If not, you can keep your gaze straight out in front. And find that breath. And start to feel that low back engage. If it feels all right for you here and you want to go deeper, you can start to walk those hands up the wall. So find a position where you can feel some pull through the chest and shoulders, and then you can just allow that upper body to fall through. If at any time this brings any tension to the neck, shoulders, back, bring those hands back down under, and then keep the forearm, forearms on the mat, slide those shoulders away. So again, working with our own bodies here. If you have the hands up the wall, find your breath nice and deep. Let the head fall between the arms. Be nice and deep into those shoulders.
Awesome, one more inhale. Feel the opening through that front side of the body. And exhale, let's release, coming over to the other side now. So that right arm is gonna press into the wall. See if you can press the shoulder right in, nice and tight here. And then as you exhale, try to twist the chest in the opposite direction. slightly just so you can see me okay might have to adjust that all right let's start with our sun salutations here so coming into your tadasana mountain pose nice and strong here lengthening out through those fingertips the feet are pressing into the mat engaging those thighs here so we're pulling the inner thighs towards one another rooting down through the feet on an inhale let's release the hands high look up as you exhale bending the knees bring the body forward Inhale, halfway, look up. Exhale, step or jump back. All the way down. Inhale, cobra, upper facing dog. And exhale, down dog. So for our first couple sun salutations, you can play around with the wall. If it feels comfortable, you can work your heels right into the edge of the wall. Or if it feels better, you can also bring your heels up onto the wall here. This list allows the sit bones to rotate up a little bit more, working deeper into those hips. If you work the heels into the ground, we're getting a little bit deeper into the backside of the legs here, stretching through the body. So it's depending on what you want to work on today. Slide those shoulders away from the ears, making sure to root down through all 10 of the fingers. Awesome, let's look forward, inhale, exhale, step or jump the feet. Inhale, halfway, create that length. Exhale, fold. All the way up here, inhale, engage the core. Exhale, hands to center. Again, with your breath, inhale, press those feet down. Exhale, halfway, or sorry, folding forward. Inhale, halfway, exhale, step or jump back. Again, for Chaturanga Dandasana, you can also press your feet into the wall here as you lower down. Inhale, cobra, upper facing dog. And exhale, down dog. So if you have the feet against the wall, again, pressing either the heels up, or if you'd like, pressing those heels right into the wall here, having a nice stretch through the calves, back sides and legs. Uh, 
Lots of one more inhale. Exhale, empty the lungs, float the feet. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. All the way up here. Inhale. Exhale. Again, with our breath. Inhale, press the feet down. Fingertips high. Exhale to the mat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step or jump back. Inhale, cobra. Upper facing dog. Exhale, down dog. So for this downward facing dog, we're going to try to go up on the wall if you feel comfortable to do so. So if not, just staying where you're at, your heels are either pressed into the wall or drop down against the base of the wall. Your hands need to stay directly underneath your shoulders. So from here, we're just going to slowly start to walk the feet up. I want you to imagine a perfect 90 degree angle between your legs and your hips here. And then you're pressing your chest through your shoulders. Try not to fall into the shoulders. You want to be nice and strong through the upper body here, making sure that your shoulders aren't passing your hands. They're pressing through just like in a downward facing dog. And then we don't want to come in a plank on the wall or we don't want our feet down here. We want them at least hip distance or hip height. Try two more breaths. Awesome. Exhale, walk those feet down. And from here, if you were up on the wall, you can come into child's pose. If you're just in downward facing dog, come into child's pose. Just wherever you're at to maintain a deep flow of breath. Relax those shoulders. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. All the way up here. Reach up through the arms. And exhale, palms to center. We're going to come through Sun Salutation B now. So just getting a little bit warmer through the body. Again, using the wall if you'd like here. On an inhale, let's come up as you exhale, squatting down through those legs. So using your chair pose here. Again, if you'd like to deepen the chair pose, you can also come and do this into the wall. So you're coming down so that your legs are nice and flat with the floor. And then your chest kind of comes forward as you reach the fingertips out. It's just like a wall sit here. Try one more inhale. And exhale, coming forward, fold the body forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, if you're against the wall, you're going to have to walk out to Chaturanga, otherwise we're stepping or jumping back, lower down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. For downward facing dog, we're going to come into our warrior pose here. I personally love the wall for warrior poses, so you're going to square off your left foot against the wall and lunge your right foot forward. So if you need to adjust that, your heel is in line with the instep of the left foot and coming up, hands onto the hips, twisting that hip forward. So I like using the wall here to press the outside of my foot into the wall and then try to rotate those hips forward. See if you can press that pinky toe down into the mat. Let's just take five deep breaths here, finding your warrior one. And this might not feel nice for everybody on their knees or any joints. So if it doesn't feel good to be against the wall, just bring that foot out. You can turn the foot slightly in to help adjust those hips. Just wherever you're at, working again with our own bodies here. One more inhale. And exhale, coming to the mat. Step your jump back, lower down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. 
Add in your warrior, squaring off that right foot. Exhale, lunge to the left. Again, heel in line with the instep of the left foot, or sorry, right foot. Hands come up onto the hips. And then again, we're twisting those hips forward. If you're using the wall, we're pressing the outside of that right foot into the wall. See if you can really press the pinky toe into the mat. If this brings any discomfort to the joints, hold that foot away from the wall. And then just adjust that back leg as you need.
again, coming into that downward facing dog, five breaths here, so whichever downward facing dog variation you want. again. You don't need to use the wall. We can just <clears throat> bend that foot up. But if you can get that knee nice and close to the wall, you're going to press the top of the foot into the wall and then slightly draw back. If you can, you're going to press your hands into the right thigh and lift the chest up. So the closer the knee is to the wall, the deeper you're going to feel stretched through that thigh. If this is too much, for you, you can just come into a crescent lunge on the knee. So wherever you're at, let's try three more breaths here.
right side now. So we're gonna square off, or sorry, our left side, we're gonna square off our right foot and lunge our left. So warrior one, again, if you're pressing that foot into the wall and you feel any pain through the joint, pull the foot away. You're gonna rotate the hips forward, sink down through that left leg. Warrior one, you're addressing A. Try to keep those legs still, nice deep lines. We're gonna open up warrior two. So again, you can use that wall with the hand if your arm reaches and you're not dragging your body over. You wanna keep your body even over top of the legs. And then see if you can press the pinky toe of the right foot into the wall here, drawing both those hips to the side. So we're opening up through the hips here, surrendering down through that left knee. If you feel any tension in the shoulders, you can rotate the palms towards the ceiling and ground, or drop the hands to the hips. towards the ceiling, try to press the knee against, or sorry, the elbow against the knee, opening up that hip. If it feels right, you can also slide that hand down to the inside of the foot, press the shoulder against the knee. If you want to, you can also bring that right hand around the back and interlace to the inner thigh.
Good. And as you exhale, we're going we're, we're gonna to windmill, I can't think of the word, into your triangle now. So dropping that right hand down to the shin, thigh, ankle, reach that left hand up towards the ceiling. And you want to imagine like you're being squished between two walls here. So you're trying to make that body as narrow as you can, stacking the shoulders on top of one another, engaging the core. You want to imagine like the inner thighs are squeezing towards each other. And if you feel comfortable here, coming into a balancing pose. So slight bend through that right leg. You can bring the hand behind, in front. It's whatever feels comfortable for yourself. And drag that left toe up. And then having the wall here, or sorry, the right, the left toes, yes. Having the wall here, you can also press that foot into the wall. And then use the support of the wall here to rotate those hips forward. Gaze forward as you exhale, step or float the feet. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. All the way up. And exhale. Palms to center. Let's keep that left foot facing forward. Now reach back through the right. And again, keeping the legs squeezing here. So we're trying to lift up on the kneecaps, lengthen out through the legs. You can bring that right hand into the hips probably fast. You're going to reach over the head with the left hand and try to keep both of those hips facing that side wall here. So we're engaging through those glutes. If it feels right, you can slide that right hand down the leg. It's playing around with your position of your hand on the wall stretch that feels good for your body. As you exhale, we'll come up and then we're going to kick out through that right hip, drop the left hand down to the shin thigh or ankle and then keeping the shoulders stacked, gaze up towards the ceiling. Triangle pose. So see if you can pull those inner thighs towards one another. If you have a block, you can also bring that block to the inside of the foot and then using that block, we'll deepen into this pose here. towards one another, left, or sorry, the right shoulder is rolling back. Again, if you feel comfortable, we can come into a balancing pose so that hand can come to the inside, in front, slide bend through that left leg. When you're ready, pull that right leg up. And then you press the foot into the hand, or into the wall, and help roll those hips open towards that side. Again, if you'd like to, you can use a block here to help the body just working at your own pace doing what feels best for your body if your foot's up on the wall try to keep it at hip level so you don't want it too high or too low Your feet up the wall. You want to release 
through the backside legs and deepen into the low back and tailbone. Just again, working with your own body here. One more inhale and exhale. From here, we're going to come down to our hands and knees. We're going to come into camel pose. We're going to walk ourselves back to the wall as close as you can get. If it's uncomfortable to sit up on the knees, you can roll the mat up or put a blanket kind of underneath um, the knees just for extra cushioning. I can't get my feet right against the wall again, but if you can, you want to have your feet flat against the wall here, and then you're going to come up onto the knees. So your hips are directly over top of your knees, your hands come to low back. And in camel pose, we almost want to imagine like we're lifting up through the spine and then rolling back. So try not to just press the hips forward and put strain on the low back. We really want to use the core, lengthen up, and then pull back. So as you inhale, lift up through the chest. And as you exhale, see if you can hinge the hips forward, bring your gaze up towards the ceiling, press the chest up. If it feels all right, you can bring the head back. The hands can drop to the ankles. Again, working with your own body. Let's take three deep breaths. Awesome, one more inhale. Exhale, release, engage the core, hinge up, and then just come into your child's pose. Hands walk out in front, and just let the head hit the mat, or again, use a block for the head. Hands can come alongside the body. Just working with our bodies. And from here, we'll come up to all fours. We're going to roll on to our side here, and then see on your side, you're going to try to scooch your glutes nice and close to the wall, and then you're going to roll onto your back. I don't know if there's a graceful way to get into this, but if you can, do so. So you want your tailbone and your sit bones nice and close to the wall here, and we're just going to start off your feet lifting up towards the ceiling. So those heels, the feet can be flexed or just relaxed, just allowing the blood to cool into the, into the hips here. Hands can come alongside the body. Good. And from here, we're just going to bring the bottoms of the feet together and the knees come out to the sides. So if you're tighter through the hips, keeping those feet up. If, it's, if you're looser through the hips, you can bring the heels down. And then you're trying to press those knees into the wall here. So just do this on the mat. Good. And from here, we're going to bring the legs back up and then lengthen the legs as straight as you can out to the sides. So if you have a strap and you want to use a strap, you can do so. You could probably just do one leg at a time would probably be the easiest and keep one leg bent in. Um, but just working again with your own body, depending on what you're trying to work here. I like to just let the legs go and just allow gravity to take over here. So it doesn't matter how far they come down, just see if you can relax. So we tend in these positions to try to tighten up through the muscles. Just see if you can let go. Listen to the sound of your breath, come back to the rise and fall of the stomach and chest. And see if you can just let gravity take over. Let those feet fall forward.
the center. And then from here, you can bring them into the chest, just rock from side to side. And coming a little deeper into that hip. If you can, you're gonna place your right foot into the wall, cross your left foot over. So if you're tighter through the hips, that right foot's just gonna come up the wall more. To looser through the hips or you wanna get deeper into the hips, you can place that foot in line with the knee and then you're trying to press that left knee away. tighter through the hips, draw that foot up the wall. If it feels right, you can bring that foot in line with the knee and then draw that left knee open. Awesome. From here, let's release. We're going to come into an inversion, so if you have any neck or shoulder injuries, just going to stay here with your feet lifting up towards the ceiling, so just draining any of that leftover toxin, drawing some heat into those hips. Otherwise, if you feel comfortable, you're going to come into inversion, so very important to keep that chin towards the chest, the gaze stays towards the belly button, hands alongside the body, and you're going to engage your core here, bringing your knees into your chest if it feels comfortable, otherwise you can do straight legs. You're going to use your core muscles to bring the hips over top of the shoulders. So you want to really pull the body forward, bring those feet over top of the head. If you're tighter through the hamstrings, you can also bend your knees, drop your forehead to your knees. And I'd like to use the wall here. So you can press your hands into the wall, really to try to get a nice straight line here, getting deep into that upper back. If you can, you can lengthen the legs over top of the head. Just making sure that that gaze always stays at the belly button here. If you want, your hands can come to the low back for support. So you can stay here with the feet over top, the knees can rest onto the head. Or again, if you want, you can come into a full inversion where the feet draw up towards the ceiling, engage the core. Just letting that blood cool through the body. And just flushing the body out here, wherever you're at. Good, and coming out nice and gently. So if the legs are up towards the ceiling, dropping the legs over top of the head, and then just slowly using the core to lower the tailbone back onto the mat. Let's squeeze those knees into the chest and just gently rock from side to side. So 
enjoying that heat and energy you've created in the body.